Welcome to the Spirit Walk Podcast, podcasting from the beautiful city of Stillwater, the birthplace of Minnesota. Are you going through a spiritual awakening? Do you wish to learn more about continued spiritual growth and want to meet others who are on a similar journey? We hope that this podcast and its community can be a meaningful resource for you. The Spirit Woke Podcast welcomes special guests from around the globe who share personal stories of their awakening journey, along with details of spiritual abilities they've developed along the way. So buckle up and get ready for this exciting episode. And now, here's your host, Adam Dins. Friends, welcome back to the Spirit Woke Podcast. Today, I couldn't be more excited to welcome Ellen Red, an amazing spiritual guide, back to the show. If you missed Ellen's first episode, I implore you to visit spiritwoke.com and check it out. It's one of my absolute favorites. Ellen's story of awakening is not one to be missed. That being said, tonight we're not here to talk about spiritual awakenings per se. We're here to talk near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, and astral projection. So Ellen, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. appreciate it. Oh, it's always a pleasure and uh, couldn't be more honored that you've joined the show and are are willing to share um, your experiences and the things that you know with with me and and, and my uh, lovely audience. So awesome. Yeah. So, well, let's let's get down to let's get down to the the, the topic of the show. So, Ellen, in, in your first podcast episode with us. You mentioned, and we didn't get into detail, that you died as a young child and experienced a near-death experience. Would would you be okay telling us a little bit about that experience? I would. Um, I've had more than one, so I'll just throw that out there. I've had several of them, actually, in this lifetime. But my first one was when I was four, and uh, I was in a swimming pool, and it was really crowded during the summertime, and we were being babysat. But there were eight kids in my family, and we were uh, our parents were on a honeymoon, and we were being babysat by neighbors who also had kids. So they had their hands full, and somehow uh, I was pretty young, and I, I got uh, uh, neglected, and so I ended up drowning in a swimming pool, and I was having conversations with God. <laughs> I was really upset that I was having to go home at that time because I knew that I was young and I, w- I was um, having a squabble with the divine and uh, eventually I just ran out of oxygen. I was fighting to get back over to the stairs and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get over there. The water kept swooshing me out the other way. And, um, the whole time I was just kind of looking up like, are you serious? I just got here. You know, <laughs> like, what do you mean? I got to go back home. And then I drowned and I had the whole go into heaven experience and the peace and the warm welcoming of all the angelic beings. And, uh, and then eventually a lifeguard, uh, pulled me out of the water and resuscitated me. And that was one of the many life, uh, many experiences that I had in this lifetime, like I said, out of body and near death. But that was the most profound uh, just because I was so young. Yeah, so so let's talk about that. So when you were in the pool and, and, and you were mentioning you were you were like talking to God, did you did you see God at that point in time or were you out of body already? Could you see yourself in the pool? Do you remember at all what that was like? Um, well, in the beginning, it was like I knew that I was dying, and I knew that uh, there was like a tunnel of light, if you want to call it that. And I'm sure you've probably heard of others talk about that in groups like this um, because it's pretty common. But there was a tum- tunnel of light, and I knew that I was being called home, and I was really upset about it. So I was just, uh, I wasn't there yet into the heavenly realm, if you want to call it that, but I was on my way. And I, the whole time that I was, uh, going, I was resisting it. And I was um, really trying to fight to get over to the steps so I could stay alive. And uh, But while I was getting called into that tunnel of light, it was uh, a feeling really more than anything. It was like a, an awareness of this tunnel of light and a feeling of, you know, the light just calling me home and be, being uh, sucked into it, if you want to call it that. <laughs> So when you sort of crossed over, if you will, uh, and um, you had that that near death experience, did you like 
did you see God? Like what, what did you see if, if, if you remember? Yeah. Once I crossed over, um, I saw, well, first I saw a Christ-like being. I, I, I would say Christ, except it's like a Christ-like being, like just an understanding of, of the Christos, if you want to call it that. And definitely angelic beings surrounding me everywhere. I knew that a lot of them were my relatives and uh, they were all angelic light beings with wings and long robes and just peaceful, beautiful divine energy and love, just nothing but love and peace. And I also understood, I mean, it's really hard to explain what you see because you're not really seeing it with your human eyes. You're feeling and understanding it from a soul level. So I understood and saw or perceived yin and yang. And that became so profound for me later on in life because that happened to me on several other out-of-body experiences down the road and ultimately led me to understand the whole journey of our soul here and the duality and the male-female aspects of the twin flame and everything else. So it became very, very profound. But at this point when I was four, I just understood yin and yang and perfect balance. And what's really interesting about that is that I I was raised at the uh, – I was was raised um, in a Mormon family uh, who, do, who, for one thing, doesn't believe in um, reincarnation, which I also understood when I was in this heavenly state. I understood that I had been to earth on many other occasions before. And um, and then also this yin and yang thing that I was perceiving. And so when I, when I came back to life or was revived and started growing up in my family and my upbringing. Um, it, that yin and yang became really profound, especially growing up Mormon, because in, in our upbringing, uh, in my family and, and in that church, there was a lot of uh, polygamist type background in that, in that belief system, it, not anymore per se, but uh, originally. And I just understood that that was wrong. And so it became kind of a source of, of a little bit of contention between my dad and I <laughs> growing up because I was a little kid, but I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. You know, it's not, it's yin and yang. It's not yin and yang and yin and yang, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting thing, but that was that was just some of what I understood there is that, that we're in perfect balance, perfect harmony, perfect, you know, divine, everything is divine order. And there's, you know, there's male and female and there's dark and light and all of that. But and so did I see God? Yes. So you are four years old when this happens. And it sounds like what you're explaining is very I won't say, well, of course it's co co complex, but it's not. But I guess I'm trying to think about it from a four-year-old mindset. And, you know, like, you know, I don't even remember when I was four, what the heck I was thinking about when I was four. But how do you, like, how do you process that when you're, when you have that NDE experience and you're on the other side, is it that you're more mature uh, like, when, when you're there that you're able to understand all of these things? Like, is it, you're not like a kid anymore? You're like like just a, a your full soul and then you come back and you're a, a four year old again like what what's that juxtaposition like That's a good question um it, definitely I understood it on a full soul level like uh, when I was there I was a soul and I understood that I was a soul and I understood that I came from this heavenly place and and all of that I wasn't really a four year old I was just me and I also came back and got revitalized and, and came back with full awareness and conscious uh, awareness and memory of what I just experienced, as well as conscious memory of past lives and, um, you know, the afterlife. But I was still a four-year-old. So um, as I was growing up, four, five, six, seven years old in my upbringing, I was having, I was already faced with because of this out uh, near death experience, I was already faced with a conflict, a spiritual conflict in my human existence. Because now I just got reminded, full, full, well aware of where I came from on a soul level and from the heavenly realms, and yet I was living in this earthly life with different upbringings and teachings in in a world that was very contrary to what I 
just saw in heaven. So I was already uh, on the cross, if you will, or torn between two worlds right from a very early age, which was quite a, a problem for me for a lot of years. And so even though I had that conscious awareness, I was also pretty confused because it was like, wait a second, I saw this and now I'm here and my big daddy is telling me this and it isn't the same thing. So it created a tear or a conflict, if you will, until I made peace with it later on, many years later. So you mentioned you have, you've had multiple, uh, past life or not past life, but multiple near death experiences. So, um, it, were were the and I know the first one as you mentioned was maybe the most profound because you were so young. But did you when you had other near death experiences? Did you have uh, any different sort of experiences on the other side? Yeah, I've had a lot of them. I had another one where I was um, I was in a dark room and I noticed something kind of light laying on the bed and I kind of zoomed in to see what it was and I realized that that was me on the bed and that I was out of my body and I was like, oh my gosh, I was trying to touch myself. That's me, I'm, I'm dying. And I heard a voice say, well, do you want to be dead? And I was in a severe depression at that time because I had lost who I believed was my soulmate the year before who drowned that I had dreamt uh, in a dream that he was going to drown and drowned with him in the dream. And then he drowned that weekend. And I was uh, really still pretty depressed about it. So I was kind of like, yes, I want to be dead. And then I was like, wait a minute. No, I got a kid. <laughs> and as soon as that happened, I sat straight up out of my bed and I had fallen asleep uh, with gum in my mouth and it flattened and slid down my throat and cut off my air supply. So I was, um, I was, I was losing oxygen and and I was coming out of my body and that's what I that's when I realized that I was out of my body. <laughs> oh wow. So in, in in any of your other near death experiences have you have you gone back to the other side or has it been more just kind of popping out of your body? Um yeah, I've I had another experience and I wouldn't say that this was a near death one. This is a more through meditative state where I 100% traveled through realms like through many many dimensions to go straight back to source and um and definitely came out of my body and saw all sorts of things, fourth dimensional beings, um fifth dimension and beyond. And that was, but it was through meditative practices that that happened and not so much a near death. I've also had near death experiences where I was taken back to past lives and saw very dark things. So I, I wasn't always shown, you know, the bright side of things. I was shown the, the reality of karmic life cycles and being stuck in dark karma, if you want to call it that. But, but yes, I have come out of body and gone straight back to source and, tra and traveled all the way back to source also it's 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 so interesting because like what you've experienced you know you almost you almost have to believe that and i'm sure you do that there's a reason why you're able to experience that or why you know you had to experience that i'm a, um i'm every day in my own conflicts, you know, so <laughs> regardless of the stuff that I'm experiencing, I'm all the time wondering, you know, what am I here for and why is this happening? I think when I was younger and all these things were happening, I just, I didn't really I embrace it. I didn't want to talk about it to people and I didn't, you know, I was kind of nervous and afraid that the world wouldn't accept me and all that. And I have overcome that and embraced it. And now where I'm at is it's like, okay, so wait a minute, even in the spiritual community, Community. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have had these experiences, but there's also a lot that haven't. So you're right. I do ask myself why and what does it mean and what am I here to how what am I here to, to do with it then? Because I do believe that I'm being asked now to help people transport between realms. And um, that was uh, something that my grandmother, when she passed away, came to me in a dream and, and she didn't know how to get back to the other side either. And I helped her get there. And I just feel like that's, for some reason, I've, I've learned how to navigate the book of the dead, if you, if you want to call it that. Yeah, that's, wow. That's so deep. That's so deep. Um, think about that for a minute. So, 
<laughs> so Ellen, uh, moving on, uh, not that, not that we need to move on, but you know, it, it, is it relates to, you know, near death experiences where you, you know, you leave your body and you go elsewhere. Uh, one of my favorite topics related to sort of the, the mystical, um, experiences or mystical spiritual abilities is the uh, ability to astral project. And ever, ever since I saw, uh, the movie Insidious, you know, I, I've just been fascinated. I remember I, I was like astral projection that I wonder what that is. And I thought it was just something in the movie. I had no clue. And then I Googled it and I was like, wait, you can really, people can really do this. This isn't just a mm-hmm. movie. And so, um, you know, as it relates to astral projection, you know, it happens that you have this ability, as you mentioned earlier, to, 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 to astral project. And so I was wondering if you might be able to talk to us a little bit about what astral traveling is and maybe what the astral realm is, is all about. Okay. Um, well, you have a light body, which is your spirit body or your energy body that is connected to your physical body, but it doesn't have to be. It can come, it, it can come out of your skin and you're, you can still be alive and still have that astral body travel through the, the astral realms, which is uh, uh, the best way I could describe that is like a grid system that is in the cosmos. So outside of your earth body and outside of the earth dome or whatever you want to call it, there is this cosmic kind of, uh, let's just say that it would be a road map, And it looks like a roads actually where it looks like a grid system of roads where you can travel up one road and over to another and you can travel through that to get to source, like going through it, I don't know how else to describe it, kind of like uh, the way that your your brain cell looks in a microscope, right? And so you can, when you when you when your light body comes out of your skin, you can actually, I guess it would be your conscious, your conscience, your conscious, or your light body, or it's the same thing, but you can travel through the, that grid system to figure out problems and figure out who you need to talk to for what. So you do this whether you realize it or not when you're asleep in that REM state, 45 minutes a night. When you go into REM, your spirit, your consciousness kind of gets a break from being human and it gets to kind of go back and regenerate itself in the spirit domain and then come back into your body. So whether you realize it or not, you're already astral traveling in your sleep. You just may not be conscious of it. So what do you think separates um, someone who is able to, you know, separate and travel consciously versus those uh, of us who uh, do it in the dream state and don't realize we're, or, or don't recall it when we wake up? Well, uh, you have to clear your conscience of any kind of baggage or unhealed wounds, whether it be from this life or another life, that can definitely get in the way of your ability to access these type of of spiritual gifts and, and your spiritual nature. And I know for myself that that's the truth because I had to work through a lot in my own in my own evolution, in my own soul work along the way before I started to access these higher abilities. So I know that when you're when your conscience isn't clear, you you can't consciously remember your sleep or your dreams. I've gotten to the point where I dream my next day almost every day now. Like I've caught up to my dreams kind of a thing. But it took me a lot of work to kind of clear out and forgive people that had hurt me in the past and, you know, forgive myself and change patterns in my life and things that that was bogging down my capacity to access higher dimensions in the spiritual state. So I would suggest to anybody that has any kind of, you know, uh, don't sweep things under the rug. You have to face it because it's a conscious kingdom where we come from. There are no secrets there, right? And so you do have to kind of clear that out. And then secondly, you know, just your desire to have a more understanding and to be more connected and to be able to access it is is enough for your higher self to help guide you. So you so the desire to want to be able to astral travel is a start. 
and then asking for the guidance, you know, in the higher, from your higher self is you will get guided as you, as you're meant to be at whatever time that you're meant to. But I would also say that for sure, you know, you got to make sure that you're not carrying any baggage around because you can't fly when you got a bunch of backpacks on your back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good analogy. Uh, and so for, for those people who are listening that want to astral project, and I know there, there are probably quite a few that have are listening that, that have tried and they practice and they have all these exercises that they do and they hear, you know, and, and I, I speak from experience too about reaching that vibrational state where, or, or as it's referred to as like sleep paralysis where your body starts to shake and, and you can hear, you know, sounds in your ears and, and a lot of people struggle to get to that point and they're like, what am I doing wrong? And it's never going to happen. But, um, but there are all kinds of courses out there that'll teach you how to do it. Uh, if you, you know, if you spend enough money on it and I, I guess, ha- what what's your experience with that? Like, do you feel like when it's your time, if it is your time, and and you're supposed to project that it it just happens, or do you feel like it's something that uh, requires practice and persistence? Well, I think that I think that you you can do it on your own just through your and not to you know disregard people that might be able to help get you there faster, but try both but i i would say that when it's your time it is your time because it's a spiritual it's your spiritual nature and the only thing that bogs us down from accessing anything that's in our spiritual nature is things that are not spiritual which means that they're not really real which means that you're bogged down by illusions from the earth dimensions so you know you you have to work through that stuff meaning really be the lover that you know that you're meant to be, forgiving people and not telling lies and not believing in illusions and speaking your truth and all of those things. Because when you're when you're not doing that, then you're bogged down, you're chained still to the earth dimensions. So you have to work through all of those chakras and get them cleared and get your energy, you know, flowing in order for this to just be natural because it is natural and maybe it won't happen to everybody in this lifetime either. So if you're trying really hard and it's not happening, stop trying for one thing. Just let it be and and follow your spirit's guidance wherever you are. Because wherever you are is where your spirit's trying to lead you through whatever you need to get through. And if you're trying to do something that your spirit's not ready to show you, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so the best thing to do is to just follow your own intuition wherever it's guiding you. And uh, let it happen naturally if if you can, because it will happen when it's your time. That's that's awesome, awesome insight, Alan. Thank you. When when you astral travel, what types of experiences do you have? Are are there places that you you tend to go, or do you just sort of go with the flow? Um, well, I've had all kinds of experiences astral traveling. I've gone and gotten doses of visitations at home, back home in the mountains. When I haven't been able to get my body there, then my spirit just says, I need to get back there and smell the mountains. And then I go fly home and I smell the mountains and I see the rain and I visit the people I love. And then I come back to my body and I wake up the next day and I'm like, "Woo, that was great. (laughs) And then I've gone and visited people in France that I don't recall in this lifetime, but apparently I have loved ones there that I have traveled to visit. Um, And I've also traveled in the astral realms to resolve. um, I've seen myself traveling through the astral realms to, you know, talk to source, to get information about how to resolve whatever it is I'm experiencing here in my human life. And uh, I've seen, like I said, I've seen that whole grid system that's like a a roadmap in the middle of space that you, you, you can travel to to get to source. And then source says, oh, yeah, go over here and talk to this person and <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> you know, y- you bring something up I want to ask you uh, about. So you-, you mentioned, you know, when you astral travel, that sometimes you'll go to France uh, and see people that you-, you don't know in this lifetime. And mm-hmm. I've had experiences where I dream, and I'm sure everyone who's listening has had a similar experience where you're with a group of people in a dream that you, you just feel like you've known 
you know, your whole life. They're your, your friends or your family, but they're not anyone in, in your current life. And so, and, and granted it's in the dream state, but like, mm-hmm. what, do you feel like that's connected to sort of traveling in the astral realm uh, where, you know, and again, it's not like astral traveling where you consciously pop out, but is, you know, where you're around people that you just have that connection with, but you just never met them before. And you wake up and you try to remember who those people were. And you're like, did I know, do I know them? Is that someone? No, that's not someone I know in my life. And then it, it's just kind of weird, but have, I mean, like, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I definitely have a lot of experience with dreams and, and learning how to navigate the dreamscape um, because I do believe that it is, I, I'm sure that it is our, it is our spiritual home, right? The, the dreamscape is where we come from. But as far as visiting people in dreams, whether you're astral traveling or not, it's the same thing to me because when you're in your dream state, you are astral traveling, you're, you're free of your body, your, your consciousness is free to go wherever. The people that I visited in my dreams, I know on some level, some of them have, were from past lives. I know that just because I know it in my soul. But I've also seen people in dreams that later on I was meant to meet in my life and I did meet them later. And so you, you really have to get to where you can kind of feel the impression of what you're being shown in your dreams. For me, I've, I've really learned how to understand what's going on in the dream world. So I can, I know when it's a warning or I know when it's somebody I'm supposed to meet or some, I was, I met my nephew before he was born and I knew that I was supposed to raise this little boy and I ended up raising him. And, uh, I, I've seen, like I said, my grandmother, when she passed away, I knew that she was going the other way. She was leaving the earth realm. So yeah, I do believe that when you meet with people in your dreams, sometimes it can be pet people from your past lives or it can be guides spirit guides that are that are always connected to you so when you're in your astral travel or your dream state you're able to just access that you know the conversations with them and sometimes it can be that you're being shown another soul that you're gonna that you're going to meet in your physical life as well nonetheless it's all souls that you know from from the flip side yeah, it's interesting because, you know, and it's all very like current, you know, it's not like in a dream, I'll go back, it'll be like, oh, I'm in the 18th century and everyone, or mm-hmm. I'm in the Victorian era, or it's like I'm in, yeah. in in Futurescape or whatever those old 80s futuristic movies, were. Yeah. you know, it's like, it's like I'm somewhere currently present. It could even be like in a movie theater with people and we're with a group of friends and we're watching a movie or something. And I, I don't know them in, 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 in real life, if you will, but we but I feel like, like they're just like my real friends in the dream state. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, it, it just made me think uh, about that since you were talking about your, your, yeah. your trans experience. Well, it, like I said, when I, when I died and, and went to heaven there, everybody was there. Like everybody's there. All souls are there, including you and I, even though our physical bodies are down here, our high souls are all up there in the heavenly realm together all the time anyway. So you might be accessing that or you might be, uh, you know, tapping into spirit guides or you're the only one that's really going to have to kind of feel your way through understanding what it means to you. But yeah. for for me, I, I mean, I just I've learned to feel the impression of what the messages are that I'm getting from my dreams. But uh, yeah, I have not reached that level of enlightenment yet. Uh, I just, you know, I I I kind of always find it interesting, though, that I more often dream of people who I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just so weird. Like, I just don't know them in this life. But then, I, you know, every once in a blue moon, I'll see someone that I know from this life. But most of the time it's people who I, I have no idea who they are when I wake up. But in the dream, it's like they're they're as close as anybody in this life is to me. What are what are the messages that they're trying to share with you? Uh, well, that's that's the it, it, there's not like a consistent theme, you know, it's like, it's just like different scenes or we're mm-hmm. just at certain places doing things together, but there's not necessarily like a message that I've been able to interpret. But, um, mm-hmm. but I've often wondered, I shouldn't say I've often wondered, I've, I've, I've wondered sometimes if that's my, you know, like if my, either if my spirit's traveling, my, you know, astral body's traveling and I'm experiencing that, or if it's just my, my brain, you know, having these dreams. Uh, it could be your your soul family, you know, and you just don't you just haven't yet reached a level of awareness to remember in this incarnation. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll have well, to talk about that more a little more in depth. 
And maybe we have a, a, a whole um, chat on Spirit Wolf podcast about dreams because I think it's it's yeah. one of the most fascinating topics. But back to astral traveling. Sorry, I, yes. I, I took <laughs> us off on a on on our own uh, grid. Pardon the pun. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, w- are, are, oftentimes when you read about astral, well, you've experienced it. But when I've read about astral traveling or talked to others who um, who travel, you know, you hear warnings about you have to look out for for, you know, dark spirits or entities or things like that. Uh, And then other other people you hear and they're like, well, no, there really aren't any dangers doing it. And that's all nonsense. But what's your take on that? Are there any dangers when you travel in the astral plane? Um, you know, I I would I would tend to I've heard both sides of it also. And in my experience, every time I've astral traveled, I never worried. I didn't allow fear to get in my vibration. So I was always safe. So if you're already starting out trying to astral travel and you have fear in your vibration, you're probably not going to be able to astral travel anyway because fear holds you down. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a lower vibration. So, but even if you do astral travel and you're going into it with the fear of some negative entity, it's probably not not healthy for you to do that. You are a light being. You are surrounded by love. You come from love. You come from unconditional love. Source uh, creator is surrounding you everywhere that you go. And I would not encourage people to be afraid of allowing their soul to take them, you know, on an adventure. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. However, I will say that in in my um, out of body experiences when I've traveled through dimensions, I did see uh, fourth dimensional beings and and beings uh, that are not human that are not positive. And so there are entities out there that are not necessarily your best friends and that, and yet they have no power over you unless you let them. So I wouldn't go into it with fear for one. I wouldn't even think about them. That's just giving power to it to, you know, I wouldn't, I've never had a problem. I've observed and seen other dimensional beings and I've seen their, uh, what they're doing to humanity and what they've been doing to enslave humanity. And so I'm very aware of them, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, discourage somebody from astral traveling or from doing meditative practices because, you know, you, you can go into it asking for the light to protect you and doing, you know, protective meditations first, but I wouldn't, I, you shouldn't be going into it with fear at all. <laughs> Okay, you 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 hit on on something that I just can't let go with that answer. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so these fourth dimensional beings that you've seen, the ones that are doing damage to humanity, to the you know, like uh, the who who what are those? Like where where do they come from? And and if we all come from spirit and and whatnot, why why are they allowed to to you know either be dark or do dark things or have a dark effect on on humanity? Like what what is that? Well, it's all the same stuff that you heard about in the Bible over all these, you know, thousands of years that that Satan was kicked out of heaven and that that there were many souls that followed Satan, if you want to call it Satan. I, I know a lot of people hate to call it that, but there 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 are souls who have chosen to not follow the laws of the universe and because they haven't followed the laws of the universe and they've done bad deeds such as child molestation or whatever over and over and over, probably over many, many lifetimes, they're not allowed a body anymore. Okay. So this is kind of the stuff that the Bible taught, right? And if you get into the Mormon teachings, the Mormon teachings even have a little added, uh, a little added information that I don't think a lot of the other religious belief systems beforehand talk about. And they even talk about the terrestrial kingdom, the celestial, the, you know what I'm saying? They have these, these tiers in the kingdoms and they talk about the terrestrial kingdom, which would be that fourth dimension or what we have understood would be purgatory. And so these beings or these entities, as far as I understand, are um, they're no longer allowed a body. 
Um, some of them I don't think ever got a body and the only way that they can feel the feelings of doing the deeds that are being done that are bad, like raping children is to attach themselves onto the body of a physical human who's unaware that this is even happening. And so you, you might've had times in your life where you're driving down the street and some really messed up thought comes in your head and you're like, what the heck? That's not me like thinking this thought. What, what in the world? So that's how they can infect people. They can attach themselves to humanity, but that's, that's only, that's only a small part of it. There's, there's also, you know, I mean, you got to have an open mind here and realize that we're, we're in a massive universe, multiverses. And so, we're not, you know, there's more than just humans, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so those those beings would basically be like the entities that that would possess a person. You've heard of possession, if you were if were you raised uh, with a religious belief? I can't remember if you told me that. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, but not not necessarily. Well, I guess. Um to some extent possession for sure, but I definitely, I've struggled with possession and, and what you're, you're sharing with me now kind of really is helping me to understand it, you know, because I've always, I've always wondered, like, you know, part of me believes in it, you know, you see cases that for sure have to, you know, where, where the, where the demon or, or the devil gets exercised from, from the person. It's like, well, well, that makes sense. But then you flip it on, on its head and it's like, well, if we're God's children, you know, and if we're, you know, connected to source and, and our soul is, um, you know, part of, of, of source, how does that happen? And it, so it's that back and forth question. I know I've kind of gone with where, you know, sometimes I believe in it, other times I don't, but what you're saying makes a lot of sense in explaining it. This is the part that a lot of people in the, in the spiritual communities don't like to talk about. And, and they all just want to talk about light and love and rainbows and butterflies and everything else. And that is total bull crap. And if people don't understand how important it is that we truly are in a war between good and evil, then we can't get out of these karmic cycles. And so even though all of those souls also belong to the divine and the source, it doesn't mean that they're allowed in higher realms. They're not. They, they are not allowed even bodies anymore because they have not chosen to go back to love. And so they violated the laws of the universe. And therefore, until they ever receive a, or decide that they're ready to choose it, they're not allowed in higher realms. But they are allowed in this fourth dimension, which is higher than the human state of of con or you know the human state and so they can access us through our minds and they have and they've manipulated us because they're higher intelligence beings but they don't have the body anymore and the only way that they can feel the feeling is to attach through you so yes they can possess humans they can and do possess humans and the only way that the human can break free from that is for the human to remember its soul self and to choose the light and the and love and so you as an individual soul have the right to choose you can't you, they can't just possess you without you allowing but if you're out just having casual sex with lots of people and being promiscuous and smoking and drinking and partying and doing whatever you want to do guess what you're opening the door for them to attach to you and that's and that's what a lot of people are not talking about this is this is called shadow work and um it's really, really highly important in a soul's evolution to get to where you, you do the shadow work to break yourself free of any karmic chains and karmic cycles that these uh, beings will possess you with. And I, I've literally personally gone through exorcisms before, sex slave demons, um, and, uh, and, more, and beyond, and more than that too. But I, I won't go into all that detail. We can save that for another day because it's a it's – if somebody's listening right now, that's, it could spook you a little bit, you know, but you have to remember you're a free will soul. And so you have the right to choose love. Now where, where we come back to, we're all one and it's all love and all that. Yeah, sure. That's it. That's in the very beginning. That's how we were created. And at the very end, all souls eventually will be allowed to get back to the the source, but some are going to get there a heck of a lot faster than others. And that's the nicest way that I can put it. <laughs>
Wow, that's a lot to unpack. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, I would love to talk more about shadow work because it's it's definitely not a, a topic that I have a lot of depth in. But you know, let me ask you this question. It's funny that you mentioned what you did because I was having lunch today with a friend, and um, you know, she, she was mentioning she was just on a, a camping trip this past weekend, and she and along on the camping trip was a, a Reiki practitioner and they were talking about this, this music festival that's coming up and the Reiki practitioner essentially, and, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but her perspective and why she doesn't go to these things is that, you know, there's a lot of drug use uh, that happens at, at these events and uh, spirits can attach, you know, through marijuana or other, or other mm-hmm. substances It can allow spirits to attach. And, you know, when I first, started going through my awakening experience. I did a lot of research. I, I'm, I've always been fascinated by both, both sides of the coin as it relates to spirituality, you know? And so, but I was really kind of fascinated because you don't really think about, well, at least I hadn't really thought about that having, having a couple many two drinks or, or smoking a little weed, whatever, uh, open, open one's self up to be, um, uh, attached to by a spirit. It, so when you mentioned earlier about going out and sleeping around and drinking and, and doing drugs, is that what you're referring to? Like when you do, those types mm-hmm. of substances, you can really o- crack yourself open to being, to being, uh, attached. Most people are, and they don't even realize that they are, but yes, a hundred percent having sex that's unchaste, that's not from the divine source showing you who your mate is that can definitely cause attachments. Um, and, 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 or if it's not being done in love, like you're just out being lustful and, and having sex with whoever promiscuously, it's a sex slave demons and they're very real and they are very real. That's the only way that I can say it. <laughs> and they do attach to you and, and they, it causes the fragmentation of the mind or multiple personalities or you see like that movie Split where they're talking about the guy that had all the different personalities. That's basically what sex slave demons do. It causes disassociation and fragmentation of the mind. It usually starts with children when they've been sexually assaulted as small ones, which is why the dark initiative is to attack some and to do so much pedophilia. Um, but that's how they, they attack a the young kids. And then it causes uh, the spirit to be uh, frag- or cracked and then that causes disassociation, which will usually lead them into some form of addiction or something else. And then they're easily able to be controlled. And then they're they're stuck in enslavement, human enslavement. And it's uh, and they don't realize that this is happening to them. And I can just tell you that I've experienced this on a personal level. So it might sound completely crazy to people, but the more that I've gone through deep, deep soul work and really standing in alignment with source every day and living in love and walking in love and following Christ's footsteps and doing all the things that I know are living in the laws of the universe, the more that I've had to uh, work out these bugs out of my system. And I call them bugs because the more that I fight with them, they're tough sometimes, but they become bugs when you've overcome them. (laughs) So the sex life demons would be uh, what you might have seen in Harry Potter with the little five foot tall, bald kind of dirty teeth looking creature with wings. They're, they're, they're like the grays. They're like the gray alien beings that you've probably heard about before. Mm -hmm. And, um, they don't like humanity and they have tried to enslave humanity. And that's one of the ways that they've done it is to lure people into thinking that it's cool to just run around and sleep with everybody. And that is absolutely not true to our soul nature. Think of, feel it, just close your eyes and feel it. Does it feel spiritually whole and healthy to run around and just sleep with whoever you want. Oh, no, I, I, I don't think so. But I also feel like you have folks that haven't really gotten to the point of awakening yet where they, yeah. they aren't in touch with their, their spirit or soul. And yeah. maybe, you know, and, and especially in our, our, our society and our culture where that kind of thing is, is 
uh, rewarded or or it, it you're, you're, yeah. you're seen as it's some sort of nobility, right? Oh, yeah. But that's what I'm saying is that this is the darkness's plan is to lure you literally right out of your own spirit. And you think you're having fun with it and you think that it's all, you know, normal and natural. But eventually for me, it came back and haunted me in my soul. And I mean, in, in a way that was so detrimental, I will never forget that lesson. Then, then when we go into like what you were saying with this lady that won't go to these, um, uh, these festivals because of the drugs, she's 100% accurate. And I can just tell you again from personal experience, because I agree with her, but the only reason why I agree with her is because I had a personal experience with it. So I wouldn't have agreed with her prior. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really easy to disagree with something when you don't understand it. But once you've had experience, it's like, oh my gosh. And I was a smoker, a cigarette smoker all my life. I started smoking when I was seven years old. And by the time I was 12, I was an addicted to cigarette smoker. And I smoked all my life until two years ago. This wow. is recent. And two years ago, after much of my, I have already had an awakening almost 10 years ago. I've gone through all kinds of spiritual things all my life. And only two years ago did the spirit finally come to me and say, it's time for you to quit. And I was shown that I needed to quit and they tried to lift me out of my light body. And in the process of, you know, go, and by the way, this was another death experience because I flatlined four times when I quit smoking. Wow. I flat, I flatlined four times and it, this was a very dark death experience. It wasn't all the fun, loving light beings and, it, and and no, this was pure hell. It was darkness. It was just awful. It was like I was suffocating under pure black gooey tar. And um, as I was fighting to breathe and live through it, I was being shown, I don't know if this is going to spook people on your podcast or not, you can cut it out if you want, but I was shown that there was this draconian being, which you might've heard of, you know, other people talk about these, um, um, you know, like uh, they're draconians, but they're, they call them the reptilian beings. And uh, they're also fourth dimensional beings that you don't see with your human eyes. You, you perceive them with your soul and they have all, they're at war with the greys and they're bigger and stronger than the greys, but they also don't like humanity. And they've also created a lot of traps for humanity to be enslaved over the many, many thousands of years that they've had a, a humanity and enslaved. And one of the things that they've done is created forms of addiction. So it, it keeps you looking outside instead of being whole inside with your soul. And it keeps you needing some kind of a, you know, some kind of a feel good from an outside source instead of just being at peace with yourself. And, and anyways, I was shown this being and it had a grip on my light body. So I wasn't able to get lifted out all the way. And I, I mean, this is, pretty kind of like deep stuff here that I'm talking about, but Wayne Dyer actually talked about having a similar experience. You know who he is? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, Wayne Dyer talked about a similar thing, but anyway, it would be remote surgery where these light beings um, were assisting to break off the fingers from this beast because it had such a grip on me um, where I was a smoker for so long, you know, and so I was, they were trying to help me break free basically. And, but when I saw this creature in my dream, I saw uh, it was 18 feet tall oh and God. it scared me so bad that I, I actually, <laughs> I actually faked dead in my dream. <laughs> And I could hear my soulmate say, hey, you can't do that. You have, you know, you have to face it. And, and now you can, you can take everything that I'm saying about this and you can look at it from a lot of different perspectives. This could be, you know, just a metaphorical, the stuff that I'm perceiving and it could be real and it can. And so however a person's experiencing it, I guess, doesn't really matter so much as it's just a 
I think a level of the souls, it, it could even be an aspect of your own ego, these beings, these creatures or whatever. It could be an aspect of your own ego that you have to overcome. So for me, it's like, okay, I had to overcome sexual promiscuity and I had to become chaste and I had to, you know, overcome addiction. And I had, and as I'm overcoming it, these are my demons that I'm overcoming. You know what I'm saying? So you could look at it from that perspective, but how I was perceiving it was was as similar to a lot of the things that other people talk about when they're talking about these beings. So take it for what it's worth. Wow. That's a whole other, I mean, it, it, this is so deep. I, I, I know, um, <laughs> you know, we're talking about astral traveling and out of body experiences, but these are the kinds of things that you see when you're, when you're able to, you know, kind of travel those, the planes and, and the different dimensions and, and, um, you know, and, and I find it so fascinating because this is, these are the kinds of like insights and uh, perception that you get where, you know, a lot of us who haven't had those experiences just, you know, we, we kind of understand that there's more than 3D. And of course, through meditation, we have experiences well, maybe where we see loved ones or, or yeah. there, but being able to see the types of things that, that you're able to, it just adds a whole other like layer of reality to everything you know yeah and another thing too is that you won't be revealed these things until your soul is ready because the psyche has a difficult time uh you know adapting to it so on a soul level i've had to overcome so many other layers of growth and awareness and and develop skills in my spiritual abilities and develop being able to astral travel before these beings were revealed to me so because it, it can be a lot for your psyche to take in. And uh, I was shown that also when I came out of body that we have to be careful, even in our teaching with spirituality, that we don't violate somebody's psyche because it can be hard for them to... It, I had a lady that kind of adopted me when I was a kid and I started talking to her about other dimensional beings and she was LDS and believed in the terrestrial kingdom and she still had a difficult time when I told her that I had seen beings like that. Um, it really scared her. And so, you know, if your, your, your high soul is always in charge of what you're going to experience. And if your high soul knows that on a soul level, you're not prepared for, you know, this level of growth, you're not going to get there. That's why I said to everybody, just let your spirit guide you because yeah. wherever you are in your journey is right where you're supposed to be. And your high soul knows what you're ready for and what you're not ready for. And if you're trying to push yourself to a level that you, you aren't developed in yet and you haven't done the other footwork to get there, you're, it's not going to happen. They're, they're in charge of you, whether you think so or not. Your high soul is the one in charge. So you just got to trust the spirit guidance and, and – um, don't, don't stress yourself out over it. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that makes, that makes a ton of sense. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it, it, there's just so much depth into all you're saying. I, I think that those listening in, uh, have a lot to integrate after, after this chat. Um, yeah, I, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, I, th I, this is, this is phenomenal. I mean, you know, it, it's just so, there's just so much, and everything kind of connects, you know, it's really hard to talk about one, one subject or one aspect yeah. of spirituality with uh, in a silo and not letting other things kind of seep in. So it, it it's, that's the truth. And like I said, I've been, I've been kind of called to assist with a lot of that shadow work, which is the darker side of stuff to help clear it out because there's, there's a lot there. And so it, when I talk, sometimes I do go into that stuff, but I'm not afraid anymore because I, like I said, I mean, you, you might get spooked for a minute when you see it. And then re, in reality, again, you're a free soul being and there's nothing that can hurt you. <laughs> you, you can't even really die. So you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I guess for me, because I've died and I know that I don't die, I'm not afraid of that stuff anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, For somebody that's listening that maybe hasn't had that experience, it might spook them. And so I apologize um, for that. But it, again, you just have to remember one to, to seek the light and the guidance of the light and the source 
yours. And two, there's nothing can touch you. It's it's really about perception and it's really about overcoming within your own self things that you're doing that violate your own soul. So for me, I was smoking. I was damaging my body. I was hurting my body temple and I was chaining my spirit to the earth dimension by being addicted to something that was not healthy for me and that was poisonous and that attached me to the energy of something that's killing people by the millions. So the darkness yeah. associated with that is very real. There's there's no rainbows and butterflies in that. I'm sorry. But you have to face the music there and overcome it first before you get to see the rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I had a similar experience. You know, I, I was I was addicted to um to something for a while and, and you know, for a couple of years, you know, and it was something that I took up after um you know, because of all the loss that I had experienced mm-hmm. in my life. And to your point, yeah. you know, like I, I, that was my coping mechanism to a, yeah. to a good extent, you know, like I just, it just helped me kind of escape from, from uh, reality, you know, and, and it was good. I didn't mind it. And, you know, but when I started to meditate and I started to really get into my spiritual practice, I, I believe that um, my spirit guides brought me across this information about where, Mm -hmm. you know, about how, you know, entities can attach through these types of of addictions. And so, um, you know, in the midst of a, uh, I can't remember if it was in the middle of a meditation or if it was after reading one of those things, I said, I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. And it was like something clicked and I never touched it again. I didn't have good for you. Yeah. I didn't have withdrawals. I didn't have, and I had tried and I had tried before I had tried uh, to quit and and maybe I would for a a couple of days, but you know, between Monday and Sunday is a long time, you know, and and life is hard or it can be hard, you know, and especially when you're, when you're always thinking about, Oh, I just need that next thing. And, um, yeah, but you know, I, I'm I, I'm I'm grateful every day that I was able to break that and, and I don't think it was me. I think it was like spirit my spirit guides like yeah. We're not going to let you do this to yourself anymore. And like you said, once you became aware that attachments can get a, a, a hold of you through it, it probably kicked you into gear also. And and by the way, just for any of your listeners, um, that's not meant to shame anyone or judge anyone or anything else for what they're doing. It's just meant to be a seat of consciousness so that as you're on your journey, you know, you do understand that, that – um, that stuff is, it's, they don't, they don't sell cigarettes in the fifth dimension. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what I was shown in my personal experience is that I was hooked and I was not going to be able to ascend and and complete my ascension process if I were to continue smoking. And I would have just died again because I saw that I had died in two past lives over smoking. Um, and so I, I, I was tapped into a couple of past lives when I was flatlining and going through all that. But it's not a meant to shame anybody. It's no, just the fact all. that our spiritual nature isn't to do things that cause us addiction. Even if we're eating out of emotional, you know, need to, to fill an emotional wound, it's still a form of addiction. So even eating as natural as it is, it's not natural when we're doing it in a way that's that's to cover up some emotion that we aren't willing to face. So yeah. So it's not a shame thing. It's just that at some point on the journey, you know, um, probably not going to want to take with you your addictions. They they can't go with you where you where you come from, you know. Yep. Now that that makes that makes a lot of sense. I so I, I want to be uh, Ellen conscious of your time, and I had another question to ask, but I think we'll. We'll try and find another episode to throw it in. We were going to talk a little bit about remote viewing, um, but uh, I, I want to be cognizant of your time and that we're almost at the hour point already. And I'm sure people who are listening, they may be driving into work or sitting in their cars or doing something where we're like, OK, can this episode please be over? I have life to get back to. Right. Uh, but this is this has been so wonderful. And, uh, uh, you know, Ellen, I can't tell you how grateful I am for for uh, for you. Um and not just for you being on, on, on the podcast, but just how grateful I am for you and for your friendship and for, um, I always learn so much from you and you're just a very special person. And I, you know, I could keep going on and on here. But. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Well, I'm really grateful for you too. And I really appreciate you having me on the show. And there's so much other magical, awesome stuff to talk about. So, um, I look forward to, to further conversations. 
Yes, me as well. And so if you want to get a hold of, of Ellen, um, she's got a YouTube page and I, you don't have, uh, do you have any videos up yet or is that still a work in progress? You know, I haven't done anything on the videos. The best way to contact me right now is through fa uh, Facebook, um, Ellen Red with two Ds. And on my Facebook, I do have a link to my um, my YouTube channel. But like I said, I, I really don't have anything up there right now. Mostly I've been in the closet. You're, you're my guy that's kind of pulling me out of the closet with all, <laughs> all of my <laughs> my um, spiritual experiences here. But I, I am ready to kind of share it out there in the world. And, and so if they want to find me or chat with me, I'm open to it. And I also have like a fan page on Facebook as well. So just look for Ellen Red and you'll, you'll see you'll see one of the two pages. OK, cool. So look her up. It's E-L-L-E-N-N. I'm no, sorry, just one E L L E N <laughs> Red R E D D. So one more time, E L L E N R E D D. Look her up on Facebook. Join that fan page. Um, I promise you that what Ellen's got coming, you're not gonna want to miss. She's truly one in a million, and so um, I, I can't wait to see what's next. So Ellen, Yay. thank you so much. Um, we'll have you thank back. You. Yeah. My, oh, my pleasure. We're going to have uh, Ellen back multiple more times and as, as many times as she's willing to join us, we'll we'll have her back. And uh, until next time, friends, be well and we will talk soon. Thanks for listening to the Spirit Woke Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to check out our website, spiritwoke.com, and connect with the Spirit Woke community on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Spirit Woke. Join us next time for another edition of the Spirit Woke Podcast. Namaste. Namaste.